Latest reports have suggested that SpaceX is making final preparations for the 5,000-ton Starship's inaugural orbital test flight by simulating its engines. The Starship is long overdue for an orbital test flight as NASA expects the craft to be ready for the Artemis mission. Let's take a closer look. SpaceX was founded by Elon Musk, a South African-born businessman and entrepreneur. At age 30, Musk made his initial fortune by selling his two successful companies, Zip2, which he sold for $307 million in 1999, and PayPal, which eBay purchased for $1.5 billion in 2002. Musk decided his next major venture would be a privately funded space company. Initially, Musk had the idea of sending a greenhouse, dubbed the Mars Oasis, to the Red Planet. His goal was to drum up public interest in exploration, while also providing a scientific base on Mars. But the cost ended up being too high, and instead, Musk started a spaceflight company called Space Exploration Technologies Corporation, or SpaceX, now based in the Los Angeles suburb of Hawthorne, California. He spent a third of his reported fortune, $100 million, to get SpaceX going. There was skepticism that he would be successful, which persisted into SpaceX's first years. After spending 18 months toiling privately on a spacecraft, SpaceX unveiled the craft in 2006 under the name Dragon. Musk was already an experienced businessman when he started SpaceX, and he strongly believed that more frequent and reliable launches would bring down the cost of exploration. So, he sought out a stable customer that could fund the early development of a rocket, NASA. His goal for SpaceX was to develop the first privately built, liquid-fueled booster to make it into orbit, which he called the Falcon 1. The company experienced a steep learning curve on the road to orbit. It took four tries to get Falcon 1 flying successfully, with previous attempts derailed by problems such as fuel leaks and a rocket stage collision. But eventually, Falcon 1 made two successful flights on September 28, 2008 and July 14, 2009. The 2009 launch also placed the Malaysian Razak Sat satellite into orbit. In 2006, SpaceX received $278 million from NASA under the agency's Commercial Orbital Transportation Services Demonstration Program, which was created to spur the development of systems that could transport cargo commercially to the ISS. The addition of a few more milestones eventually boosted the total contract value to up to $396 million. SpaceX was selected for the program along with rocket plane Kistler, but RPK's contract was terminated with only partial payment after the company failed to meet the required milestones. Multiple companies participated in the COTS program in its early stages and funded or unfunded contracts. In 2008, NASA awarded two contracts for commercial resupply services. SpaceX received a contract for 12 flights, and Orbital Science Corporation received a contract for eight. The workhouse rocket of the SpaceX fleet is the Falcon 9, and one of its features is reusability. Falcon 9 has much more cargo than Falcon 1, at around 28,991 pounds to low Earth orbit, compared to Falcon 1's capacity of 1,480 pounds. The first Falcon 9 booster landing took place on December 21, 2015, and SpaceX now strives to make its boosters retrievable as a matter of course. They generally land on a robotic drone ship near the launch pad. Many of the Falcon 9 boosters have been used multiple times to reduce launch costs. A more powerful rocket, known as Falcon Heavy, made its debut on February 6, 2018, meeting almost all of its major milestones. Falcon Heavy successfully flew to orbit, carrying a Tesla Roadster and a space-suited mannequin nicknamed Starman. SpaceX ran a live stream of the launch and the Roadster's first few hours in space, which attracted attention from all over the world. The two rocket boosters landed successfully near Kennedy Space Center, as expected, but the core stage hit the ocean at 300 miles per hour, which was too fast, and it didn't survive the impact. Falcon Heavy then performed an engine burn in space that is expected to bring the Roadster at least as far as Mars' orbit. April 2019 saw a setback for SpaceX when a test of the Crew Dragon spacecraft, intended to bring NASA astronauts to space, experienced a malfunction while on the ground. This created a smoke plume visible for miles around Cape Canaveral, Florida. The incident set back the company's timeline for bringing people to the International Space Station. 
That said, the company has recovered and has been bringing people to orbit with few issues since the debut crewed mission in 2020. The next and most crucial milestone for SpaceX was Space Station Delivery. Dragon, riding a Falcon 9 rocket, delivered its first cargo to the space station in May 2012 under a test flight for the COTS program. The launch was delayed for a few days because of an engine problem, but the rocket lifted off safely on the next try. Spaceflight observers commended SpaceX's ability to send a cargo spacecraft to the ISS. Private spaceflight hadn't even been considered when the space station was developed in the 1980s and 1990s. SpaceX fulfilled the first of its regular commercial flights to the space station in October 2012. That flight achieved most of its objectives, but it experienced a partial rocket failure during launch. The failure ended up stranding a satellite, Orbcom OG2, in an abnormally low orbit, which led to the mission's failure. A new version of Dragon's cargo variant began flying in December 2020 and has executed all five of its planned missions successfully to date. Starship is the centerpiece of Musk's eventual plans to head to Mars. While the spacecraft remains in early testing, it is NASA's choice of craft to send Artemis astronauts to the moon no earlier than 2025. The testing program began with a smaller vehicle known as Starhopper, which performed a series of tethered and untethered flight tests in 2019 and 2020. Then SpaceX began testing a series of Starship vehicles in high-altitude flights, starting with a cautious hop test of SN5 in August 2020. One of the program's greatest challenges was executing flip maneuvers in midair, which led to the demise of several starships before SN15 achieved a soft landing on May 5, 2021. Starship is designed to launch into orbit and deep space aboard Super Heavy, the 230-foot-tall booster that holds roughly 3.6 tons of liquid oxygen and methane in its propellant tanks. Like all of SpaceX's boosters, Super Heavy is planned to be reusable. It will feature four grid fins to assist in controlling the booster's descent. The fully stacked Super Heavy and Starship were put together on a launch pad for the first time in August 2021, standing 395 feet tall. That's more than 30 feet taller than NASA's massive Saturn V moon rocket. This Starship Super Heavy version is set to perform an orbital test in 2022, pending a delayed environmental review of the Federal Aviation Administration of SpaceX's launch facilities in Boca Chica, Texas. The public response to the review added more data points than FAA was anticipating, lengthening the process. SpaceX has customers from the private sector, military, and non-governmental entities which pay the company to launch cargo into space. Although SpaceX makes its money from launch services, the company is also focused on developing technology for future space exploration. And Musk's dreams of flying to Mars are undimmed. In 2011, he told delegates at the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics in San Diego that he planned to take people to Mars in 10 to 15 years. Three years later, at the International Space Development Conference, he said the reusable rocket stage would be a step in getting to the Red Planet. In 2016, Musk unveiled his technological plan for Martian transport, which is a part of his plan to create a self-sustaining red planet colony in the next 50 to 100 years. The Interplanetary Transport System, as the rocket is called, is essentially a larger version of the Falcon 9. The spaceship, however, will be quite a bit larger than the Dragon, as it is slated to carry at least 100 people per flight. Musk followed up his announcement in 2017 by publishing a paper describing a future red planet city of a million people and providing more details about how the ITS would transport cargo and people. He further updated his Mars plans in September 2017 at an address in Australia. He didn't mention the ITS during the talk. Instead, he talked about a system called the Big Falcon rocket. The spaceship that BFR will carry will be 157.5 feet tall and have 40 cabins for passengers, likely with a capacity of 100 people. Musk once again unveiled an update to his Mars plans in September 2019, renaming the first BFR to Starship MK-1 and switching its outer coating from expensive carbon fiber to stainless steel. Starship continues to feature in Musk's Mars plans. In a February 2022 update, Musk said it may be possible to reach a launch rate of one Starship vehicle every six to eight hours and one Super Heavy rocket every hour on missions that would send up to 150 tons of payload to orbit.
Such a high launch rate is expected to bring down costs, making Mars settlements more financially feasible. Reports from NASA suggest that the massive Starship vehicle could launch on its first-ever orbital test flight any day now. The agency has a stake in Starship's progress. NASA picked the giant rocket as the first crewed lunar lander for its Artemis program of moon exploration. If all goes according to the current plan, a Starship will put boots down near the moon's south pole in 2025 or 2026 on the Artemis 3 mission. No Starship prototype has taken flight since May 2021, and all of its jaunts so far have reached a maximum altitude of just six miles or so. However, observers have now noted that SpaceX has begun pre-launch testing of the craft by simulating its engines for an upcoming flight. SpaceX's desire to fly an orbital mission with Starship prompted a lengthy environmental review by the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration, and there are still several things to finish up. That FAA review, called a Programmatic Environmental Assessment, examined Starship activities at Starbase, SpaceX's facility near the city of Brownsville in South Texas. The FAA concluded the assessment in June, following the numerous delays from late 2021 due to the need to consult with other agencies and deal with public comments. The FAA said this past summer that SpaceX needs to take 75 actions to reduce its environmental impact on the area. Despite SpaceX founder Elon Musk saying several times that Starship would be ready to go orbital soon, Musk recently said the target was November, and it seems like SpaceX isn't quite finished with those FAA action items. The coming mission aims to heft a prototype 165-foot-tall Starship vehicle into orbit atop a super-heavy booster that has a height of 230 feet. The stacked hardware is the tallest rocket system ever. SpaceX has already conducted several static fire tests in 2022 to get Starship ready for the approximately 90-minute mission that, if successful, would see the spacecraft splash down off the coast of Hawaii. However, it's unclear how much prep work remains before SpaceX is ready to launch the mission. SpaceX's human landing system contract with NASA requires several successful spaceflight tests before Starship will be authorized to put astronauts on the moon. NASA is also seeking a second vendor for crewed Artemis landing missions, but more options won't be ready until Artemis 5 at the earliest, putting SpaceX in line for landings on Artemis 3 and Artemis 4 in about 2025 and 2027, depending on how earlier missions go. If you like this video, you may also enjoy this one, which talks about SpaceX's launch of the new Starlink V2. Do you think the Starship is capable enough for a mission to the moon? Please share your thoughts in the comments section below.